Hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about Synology Surveillance Station. But more than that, I want to talk about Synology's new Surveillance Live Cam. It's the ability to turn your mobile phone into an IP camera for surveillance. All, many, many, many of us have mobile phones just knocking around in drawers and more that we could repurpose as cameras for our surveillance platform and therefore <clears throat> utilize them in a surveillance setting and save us buying money on cameras. Now, right now I am well aware of the out of sync nature of the audio and video. This is because I'm recording this on an IP camera to highlight the point about the cameras. Now this is a Rio Link C2 Pro and the frames per second as you can see has dipped significantly there on the picture on screen. So for now, the audio you're hearing is recorded off camera, but the video you're seeing of my face is on a camera recording at Thames frames per second on an IP camera. Now these are designed to be on for greater lengths of time, and this is another reason why it's exceedingly advantageous to use a mobile phone, and I'll show you why in a bit. But for what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move over to the mobile phone screen that you should see on the camera right now, and I'm gonna show you how, to, how easy it is to install live cam. So the first thing you need to do is head over to the app center on your phone. If you're using a Google device, you need to use Play Store. Otherwise, if you're using an iOS, you use Google Play. So if you go for live cam, in the hope that you look up the word Synology because you'll be terrified for any other live cams out there, and the app is very straightforward. You install it as you would and it's completely free. Once it's installed, you boot up the application. Now, if you've not used the application before, it will prompt you to utilize your um, uh, your login credentials for your Synology NAS. But once you've done that, the camera will then ask you to set up the camera for the first time. So you put the camera in the position you want it to be, and when you're ready to record, you click the begin button. Now, we click that to begin, and the camera is now going to be recording from my mobile phone whilst it's set up. At the same time as that, it will be recording there on the screen. And here we are. Well, it's all set up. I'll be honest, I apologize for the break in the recording. Largely, that was because you can't use capture recording software on your phone and the IP camera software. When you think about it, it's a bit of a no-brainer. But this is utilizing my Pixel 2 XL as an IP camera. Now, the first thing you should probably see on screen during the screen recording is an increase in camera quality on that IP camera. On top of that, there's definitely a change there in the frames per second. This is using the front camera at around 30 frames per second. And again, it's very, very straightforward indeed. And once it's set up, you don't have to set it up again. As soon as you activate the camera and you've added your login credentials, it will automatically be supported on this software. It will pop up straight away. And of course, an IP camera that is a web camera is of course portable. So what you can do is you can start moving along and carry on and looking at other areas. Now again, as you can see, we're in a working office here. There are other people in the building, but it is that straightforward. There's a recording set up there and there are lots of settings on this. On this camera itself, you've got all the cameras and uh, settings and functionality you would have on a mobile phone. So you're able to do stuff like lower and heighten the frames per second. At the moment, this is set to 30 frames per second and 1080p HD. But of course, once you move away from the wireless access point, things will change dramatically. So again, slight change in sound quality there. But again, the options that are open to you from a webcam interface like this are quite interesting indeed. Because right now, I presume the other camera is showing me walking away. I can't see that camera at the moment. And again, I will be trying to do a full overview of this software very soon indeed. It's just going to be a little bit difficult to do an over-the-shoulder run um, rather than doing a screen capture on this device. And again, flicking between these cameras is very straightforward indeed. Let's put my phone there and I hope it doesn't drop down. And you guys can get a slightly unexciting look at my mid-drift. Now, on the camera, I can see straight away that the, the difference in uh, frames per second and what's being sent over is slightly slower. The IP camera in question is a real Link C2 Pro. It's about 90 quid, I think, and that includes the tax. But again, you can utilize your mobile phone with the surveillance station software really, really easily. But do bear in mind that when you do that, you will need to have sufficient camera licenses to do this. You will need to make sure that um, you have an available IP camera license to take advantage of that. I'm looking at this camera and I'm looking at this camera. See what the time difference is between them. But 
the camera itself can be utilized just like any other camera, like any other IP camera. You can set, you can't really set control patterns. But you can do stuff like motion areas of the screen if you want to do alert panels or set stuff up just like you would any other camera. If we go into the settings <coughs> of this camera, we can go into this and find out more. We can configure this tool, this camera a little bit more, but it looks like most of these settings have to be done from that side, which is super annoying because it would have been really, really handy to show you, but I am gonna have to come up with some camera over camera interface for the next video. Um, obviously you can't do much in terms of panning, tilt and zoom because it's a free moving structure without any motor areas built into it. But this has been turning your mobile phone into an IP camera for surveillance NAS. I do recommend it. It's free to do and it's you know really, really impressive here. Obviously you can use a lot of power, so you will need this mobile phone to be on a power source in the long term. But otherwise, let's go back to the multi-camera interface. Let's get rid of you, put you back to there. And on my rather terrible 10 frames per second camera there, I'm gonna say goodbye to you. And then I'm gonna move over to you and say goodbye to you. And I hope you like and subscribe. Remember to support this channel with your likes and your subscribes and your comments, because we don't have Patreon. We don't do anything like that, you know, PayPal, Patreon. What we do is support this with your engagement. So it really does help when you do engage with the audience. Thank you so, um, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.